All right, so an example of where a unit rate could come in handy. I actually went into Publix and looked at, I think it was Coke, looked at the price of some sort of soda, but I'm pretty sure it was Coke, and they had two different sizes. They had a 1.25 liter for $1.47, and they had a two liter for 243. So if I wanted to look at this in terms of how um, essentially how do I determine which is the better deal, I would usually look at unit rates. And in order to find unit rates, I have to, well first we would say, well what is the, you know, what is the ratio here? So the ratio, or the rate, if you like, is 1.47 over 1.25. Now that's dollars and liters. And then over here on the two liter, it's $2.43 per two liters. Okay, so mathematically that works, and I could compare these two except this goes back to the same notion that we had about comparing fractions. If I'm going to compare fractions, they kind of need to have the same denominator. So I could look at finding a common denominator and um, dividing out or multiplying out to find this common denominator and then comparing the numerators. That would be one way of doing it. Um, but in this particular example, what we're going to actually do is to find the unit rate and in so doing, be able to compare the cost per unit for these two sodas. So I'm going to quickly go through long division, but we could just as easily grab a calculator if we wanted to and um, end up with the same sort of um, the same sort of answer anyway. So for long division, if we've got a divisor that is a decimal, so the divisor here is 1.25. I can't use that in long division, or if I do, it will mess up my answer. So what I do is I multiply or move the decimal to the right, however many digits I need to in order to make the divisor a whole number. So 1.25, I'm going to change to be 125. And I needed to move the decimal two spaces to the right in order to do that. So I do the same thing with the dividend. So instead of 1.47, it's 1, 4. Seven. Okay, so I already know that 125 does not go into 1, and 125 does not go into 14, but 125 does go into 147 one time. And so I then write down 1 times 125, which is 125, and then subtract. So this is 22 and I'll bring down an additional zero. Same thing again, it looks like. I'll keep track of my decimal place here. 125 goes into 221 time. So I'll write that down. One times 125 is 125. Subtract 125 from 220 and I will get 95 and then bring down another zero. Now, 125 goes into 950 seven times, I think, because 7 times 125 is 875. 950 minus 875 is 75, I believe. And then I'll bring down another 0. Okay, so this is good. So 750, 125 goes into 750 six times. 6 times 1. 25 is 750. So when we do this final subtraction, we get a zero. Okay, so the good news is that this divides evenly. So then our unit ratio or unit rate is 1.176. And that's really dollars per liter. So if you're buying a a 1.25 liter soda at the Publix locally, at least this weekend, 
then the price would be $1.176 per liter. All right, now the same sort of thing goes, although the division should be easier, for this guy, $2.43 into two. Well, now I'm dividing two into 243. So the first thing is I don't have to move the decimal point because two is already a whole number. Fantastic. And so now I can just proceed with long division. Two goes into two one time. One times two is two. Subtract and get zero. And bring down the four. Okay. Two goes into four two times. Two times two is four. Subtract and I get zero. Bring down the three. And three, no. Two goes into three one time. One times two is two. Three minus two is one. Bring down a zero. Two goes into ten five times. Five times two is ten. Ten minus ten is zero. So here the unit rate is 1.215 dollars per liter. Okay, so then now I can compare and say, well, the better deal, if you will, is to buy the 1.25 liter because it only costs 1.176 dollars per liter, whereas the two liter, even though it has more, costs more per unit uh, than its smaller counterpart. And that's a practical application of unit rates.